The UN Security Council will hold a debate on insecurity in Africa. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi will chair the open debate as the council seeks to address the root causes of conflicts in several African countries that have led to humanitarian crisis. CGTN's Nick Mudimba has more details. Conflicts, deadly terror attacks and even wars have slowed down the development of several African countries. This has led to humanitarian crisis in several parts of the continent. The United Nations Security Council has condemned such attacks and killings. It now wants to find solutions to the conflicts across the continent. I'm happy that the, 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 the UN Security Council is um, having that recognition that Africa is fairly much now uh, where the, the war theater is with regards to the transnational crimes and some of the crimes like terrorism is taking center stage. And fairly much, um, you know, when we were dealing with the Islamic states, uh, I think this, as, as, as it was fairly much done in the other spaces in the Middle East, that's when the, 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 the international community started to have a look at what could be happening in Africa. And fairly much, this is a threat that's now getting deeply rooted in Africa because of uh, those weaknesses in governance and where there are porous borders. While focus remains on promoting peace and security in Africa post-pandemic recovery, is also part of the Council's agenda. Terrorism and violent extremism are arguably Africa's greatest security threats in 2021. Local groups with international terror links are embedded in East, West and Southern Africa. The activities often lead to local conflicts and enable organized crime rackets, destabilizing already fragile political landscapes. Some of the African countries in active conflict hotspots include three countries of the Central Sahel, that is Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. Others are the Central African Republic, Somalia, and now Mozambique, which is experiencing a crisis in Cabo Delgado. Terrorism anywhere on earth is terrorism elsewhere on earth. Right now, the baselines have moved. Any threat that's happening somewhere else is not uh, private and personal anymore. They are both very public and global in impact. Type of conflicts being experienced in Africa are inter-ethnic conflicts, interstate conflicts, liberation conflicts, civil rights conflicts, and political transition conflicts. State Council and Foreign Minister of China Wang Yi will chair the open debate, which is one of China's signature events during its May presidency of the Security Council. A presidential statement may be adopted in connection with the meeting. Nick Mudimba, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. Well, let's get more on that development. Uh, we'll go to Dr. Andrews Atta Asamoa. He's the head of Africa Peace and Security Governance Program, ISS. He's joining us via Zoom from Pretoria in South Africa. Thank you, uh, Dr. Asamoa, for joining us on the program. The UN Security Council is putting the spotlight now on efforts to address conflicts in Africa. What should be the key priority areas? Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, I think that if you look at all the drivers that we see on the continent, um, it ranges from political issues to identity issues to issues of natural resources, all the way through to issues of marginalization. In terms of causes, the key issues that we need to put priority on is actually has to do with governance issues because at the end of the day, they are the main drivers of the many issues we have on the continent. But in terms of geography, I think we really need highlight of the many issues um, in the Sahel region of the continent. We've also seen escalation of um, insecurity in the southern part of the continent around Mozambique. So that also needs massive prioritization. The Horn of Africa certainly needs so much focus, even though Somalia has made some progress. There's really need for us to sustain the progress there. So the Horn of Africa, right, um, and in some parts of West Africa as well. So those are the areas we need to put focus. So Africa often talks about African solutions to Africa's problems. Do you think homegrown solutions are inadequate in resolving conflicts on the continent? And how can such initiatives be strengthened? So far, we can praise some of the homegrown solutions at the level of the African Union in terms of trying to operationalize the African standby force, but also preventive diplomacy at many levels, even regional engagement and some very robust actions by some member states. But that is um, woefully inadequate. If you compare that to the nature and gravity of the issues we have on the continent, what that means is that external support is incredibly important. Now, the main point here is that, you know, insecurity everywhere in the world nowadays it's insecurity everywhere. So 
as much as Africa may be hosting these conflicts, it's also important for the world to know that insecurity in Africa is as much insecurity in any part of the world. That falls in actors like the United Nations. As much as the United Nations also has a primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. So there's something happening in Africa, but that is inadequate. And I think that calls for support from all actors in this sense. Well, economies and health systems in Africa, we know, have been badly hit by the coronavirus pandemic. This, in some way, has compounded uh, the security challenges on the continent. What strategies will address this issue in a post-pandemic recovery situation? I think we need to be realistic. Um, the main thing that the COVID has brought to bear is that it's more than a health um, situation. And so what we need to do is first of all, at the national and regional levels, understand that COVID is much more than a health crisis. We need to look at it as a holistic situation that requires us to look at the security dimension of it. As you indicated, and rightly so, there has been a worsening of several um, indicators of insecurity across the continent. And so that has to be part of the robust response. As much as the economic fact variables are important, because if we don't get the economic recovery right, then all the drivers of insecurity associated with the economic situation might force an up, um, an increase in insecurity as well. So we need more of a holistic solution, particularly when it comes to the creation of jobs so that we can address the, the, the youth question that we have on the continent. All right, Dr. Andrews Atta Asamoah joining us there from Pretoria. Thank you.